I think the trails represent our American heritage. It's our legacy. It, it's what the traditions of the American dream is all about. It's a real experience of the past. You appreciate the pioneers and what it took to get here. The trails in Wyoming are still visible through most of the state. And you still get that, that pioneer sense of, of being out in the country that they travel. The trails are always at risk. And we know that at the end of a calendar year, there's going to be fewer trail resources than there were at the beginning of the year. These are remnants of the past that once they're gone, they're gone. We cannot bring them back. Travelers bound for Oregon and California today cruise along the highways at speeds of 70 plus miles per hour. Nearby, but invisible at highway speeds, lie faint remnants of those who passed this way before. An unmarked pioneer grave is a reminder of the hardships that earlier travelers experienced. In the 1840s and 50s, this was the scene of the largest voluntary migration in human history. In just over 20 years, almost half a million people, men, women, and children, made a five-month, 2,000-mile journey across a vast, undeveloped country. These were the people that put our nation together between the Missouri River and the Pacific. And they were the people that completed America's manifest destiny to become a nation from ocean to ocean. They were really the people that built the western half of America. These pioneer immigrants traveled a rugged, narrow corridor that was previously used by American Indians and fur trappers. Today, most of this immigrant route lies beneath the commercial and agricultural development of the past 150 years. It's estimated that only about 15% of the trail remains, and most of that had been lost and forgotten until recently. The Sierra Nevada mountain range was a forbidding barrier for the pioneers as they entered California. The Carson Trail quickly became the most popular route to cross these mountains in search of gold. Because if we look out, we get a wonderful view. For over 25 years, Frank Tortorich searched this mountain range to find physical remnants of the Carson Trail. Some of it ha is gone and been interrupted because of highway construction and, and development, campgrounds. But there's still many, many segments that you can follow by seeing depressions in the ground, swales as we call them, where the wagons and the animals walk through and destroy the ground and then erosion has taken place. Some of these depressions can be seen only at certain times of the year when the vegetation allows. Other remnants, such as names painted with axle grease, have worn away and are visible only in the right kind of light. So we see a difference in coloring. The wagon wheels hit the high points of the rock. It leaves these iron Rust stains made by iron wagon wheels are the only sign that this was once a busy thoroughfare. As I call it. When you see a rust stained rock, you're seeing it in its location where, where the wagons came through. You're standing in that same location. You can walk up the trail, the same trail that thousands of people and thousands of wagons came up. In a museum, even though they're wonderful things to look at, they're taken out of context. They're taken away from their original location. Out here, it's the relic in place. It, it's history and position. See how dramatic it is. So let's head up on the trail. Frank works closely with the National Forest Service to protect what remains of the Carson Trail. The Forest Service routinely consults with him anytime there is a threat to the trail. This is a type of history that once lost can never be retrieved. 
because I saw these trails as a youngster and I see how they're gradually disappearing. This is our history. The whole essence of the American dream is wrapped up and identified, in my opinion, by these trails. And so even today, after 25 years, I am still searching for segments of trail that have not been discovered, alternate routes in some cases. Would have been filled with wagons. Discovering a trail is a lot like a treasure hunt. North of the Carson, such a hunt takes place for the remnants of a lesser known trail that provided gold seekers with a route to the northern mines. Andy and Joanne Hammond had an interest in old trails when they retired to the small northern California town of Chico. By pure coincidence, their new next door neighbor was an archaeologist with the National Forest Service. He said, well, I have found some traces that I think might be part of the old trail. So the next week we were up here looking at him, and sure enough, he had found part of the trail. So then uh, I got volunteered, my wife and I did, to map the trail for the National Park Service. Andy and Joanne spent the next five years locating and mapping the Beckworth Trail. Their treasure hunt took them to museums and libraries in the winter months and out on the trail in summertime. We uh, gathered maps, gathered diaries, everything that we could find relating to the trail, and then actually went out and located the traces, and then we put them on uh, modern topo maps. Pioneer diaries describe the physical landmarks along the Beckworth Trail that are still visible. These descriptions helped pinpoint the exact location of the trail. And then in crossing a creek, the wagon in which he was riding tipped over, and he was seriously injured. So they stopped and waited, and he died, and they buried him, and they described how they buried him at the base of a spruce pine tree. Well, the stump of that tree is still there. Red stones and ended up in another valley. Andy and Joanne now help others to enjoy the Beckworth Trail. Steel markers placed at key points along the trail contain inscriptions taken from pioneer diaries. While these inscriptions help people to learn about the pioneer experience, they are no guarantee that these trail remnants will be preserved. That requires a more comprehensive trail inventory. You've got one wheel and a rut and one bouncing along the road. The National Park Service's Long Distance Trails Office is creating a database of historic trails. Using coordinates gathered by volunteers in the field, they plot the exact location of trails all across the country. The idea behind it is if you don't know where the resources are and what they are, uh, you'll have difficulty in endeavoring to protect and preserve them. When the phone rings or we get word that there may be some trail site that's at risk because of some kind of development or, let's say, threat, then we need to be able to establish exactly where it is and know it is, in fact, um, a trail-related risk or if it's extraneous to the trail. To help create this database, volunteer members of the Oregon California Trails Association spend many hours on the trail. High-tech satellite imaging equipment provides pinpoint accurate locations of important sites. And those individuals are really the experts because they know with, with great familiarity the location of the trail and the sites along it. There are many variations to trail preservation. In Wyoming, wide open space remains virtually unchanged from the pioneer days. Here, preserving the area around the trail can be just as important as the trail itself. Once you get out on the trail, once you actually see those ruts stretching out in front of you across this empty country, once you get out and kick up the dust and, and, uh, and walk a few miles down, down these ruts, uh, it's a new experience. It's an experience, I think, that stays with most people that have done it forever. This new experience is a visual link to the past, so what goes on around the trail can diminish it. Energy development plays a major role in Wyoming. Will it spoil this visual link to the past? The Wyoming Bureau of Land Management tries to accommodate both energy development and historical preservation. 
Archaeologist Russ Tanner takes thousands of photographs, carefully documenting much of the immigrant trail that crosses public land. These photographs are used to map a visual corridor along the trail. This corridor is the view that can be seen from the trail. It's used to help determine where oil and gas exploration may or may not occur. In most cases, drilling activity can be located far enough away that it is not visible from the trail. With pristine landscapes and trail segments, is it possible to get any closer to the pioneer experience?